Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 27th of April. Medical supplies flow into India as COVID-19 deaths near 200,000. Pakistan assures Afghan government of Taliban's return to talks. And COVID-19 infections surge in Nepal fueled by mutant strains from India. And now for all the details. India's healthcare system is buckling as a record surge in COVID-19 cases puts pressure on hospital beds and drains oxygen supplies. India's new coronavirus cases stayed above 300,000 for a sixth consecutive day on Tuesday, while its armed forces pledged urgent medical aid to help battle the staggering spike in infections. With Indian capital facing a crippling shortage of life-saving oxygen, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said his government will import 18 cryogenic tankers from Thailand and 21 ready-to-use oxygen plants from France. India is facing the onslaught of the second wave of the coronavirus and the country continues to report over 300,000 new cases daily and more than 2,000 deaths due to the virus. India's new coronavirus cases stayed above 300,000 for a sixth consecutive day on Tuesday, while its armed forces pledged urgent medical aid to help battle the staggering spike in infections. Over the past 24 hours, India recorded 323,144 new cases, below Monday's worldwide peak of 352,991. The pandemic has put a strain on the medical infrastructure of the country with hospitals battling shortage of oxygen and beds. Nations including Britain, Germany and the United States have pledged aid, while Indian Americans in US Congress and the technology sector have joined forces to help. On early Tuesday, a shipment of vital medical supplies from the United Kingdom including 100 ventilators and 95 oxygen concentrators arrived in the Indian capital of New Delhi. Amid rising demand for medical oxygen due to an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, the Delhi government on Tuesday announced that it will set up 44 oxygen plants in the national capital within one month. Delhi is among the 10 states that reported 71.68% of the new cases in the country. The Delhi government is also importing 21 ready-to-use oxygen plants from France and 18 oxygen tankers from Bangkok. अगले एक महीने के अंदर दिल्ली में हम 44 ऑक्सीजन के प्लांट्स लगाने जा रहे हैं, 44. इसमें आठ प्लांट्स केंद्र सरकार लगा रही है, वो कुछ बीच में डिले हो गया था जो भी कारण रहे, लेकिन अब उम्मीद है कि 30 अप्रैल तक ये शायद आठ प्लांट्स लग के तैयार हो जाएंगे और 36 प्लांट्स ऑक्सीजन के दिल्ली सरकार लगा रही है। जिसमें से मैंने बताया जैसे आपको 21 प्लांट्स फ्रांस से आ रहे हैं और बाकी 15 प्लांट्स हमारे देश के हैं। इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन मंडे स्पोक टू यूएस प्रेसिडेंट जो बाइडेन एंड थैंक्ड हिम फॉर ऑल द सपोर्ट हिज कंट्री इस प्रोवाइडिंग इंडिया इन इस बैटल अगेंस्ट द the Pakistani delegation led by Special Envoy Mohammad Sadiq arrived on a two-day visit to Kabul this Sunday and met President Ashraf Ghani Special Envoy Umed Dodzai and National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib in separate meetings. The delegation assured the Afghan government of the meaningful participation of the Taliban in the Istanbul summit. President Ashraf Ghani, Special Envoy of Afghanistan to Pakistan, Mohammad Umair Dodzai, met with the Pakistani delegation led by Special Envoy Mohammad Sadiq during their two-day visit to Kabul on Sunday. 
During the meeting, Dodzai said that Sadiq assured the Afghan government of the meaningful participation of the Taliban at the Istanbul summit. He told the local media outlet Tolo News that his Pakistani counterpart also assured them that the Taliban will agree on a reduction in violence and ceasefire with their participation at the peace summits. The Pakistani delegation pledged it will address its promises right after the announcement of a new date for the Turkey conference. However, the delegation has not shared details of the Taliban team's visit to Islamabad, said Dotsai. Afghanistan's National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib, who also met Pakistani delegation in a separate meeting, stressed the need to redouble joint efforts in resolving outstanding issues, including peace, security, trade and transit. Pakistan, which helped facilitate U.S.-Taliban negotiations in Doha that resulted in the initial May 1 withdrawal deal, wields considerable influence with the Taliban. This comes as the Istanbul Conference on Afghanistan was expected to be held this month, but it was delayed over non-participation by the Taliban. The Taliban had earlier refused to attend any summits until all foreign forces were pulled out of Afghanistan. The Taliban and the United States last year agreed that all foreign forces would be withdrawn from Afghanistan by May 1, a date that was pushed back recently by U.S. President Joe Biden. In news from Pakistan, the Pakistan Democratic Movement Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman has asked the Pakistan People's Party and Awami National Party to reconsider their decision to quit the opposition alliance. He informed PDM is soon going to start a public contact campaign after Eid to oust Prime Minister Imran Khan led government. Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM Chief Mulana Fazlur Rahman has urged the PPP, Pakistan People's Party and ANP, the Awami National Party, to reconsider their decision to part ways with the opposition alliance that was formed in September last year to dislodge the PM Imran Khan-led PTI government. Rahman on Monday chaired a meeting of the PDM steering committee in Islamabad. He also said the alliance is soon going to start a public contact campaign with full force after Eid and is still committed to getting rid of the government over its inefficiency. छोड़ने की बात की है लेकिन उनको जो हमने नजरसानी की अपील की है उस अपील पर हम अब भी कायम The PPP and the ANP decided to leave the alliance after the PDM issued show cause notices to their leaderships for disregarding the opposition alliance's decision with regard to fielding a candidate for the position of the Senate leader of opposition and seeking support from a party of the ruling coalition Moving on Sanitation workers in illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir are on a strike for the past one week to demand job regularization and against the deduction in their salaries. The strike has created a worrisome situation in Muzaffarabad city and the workers have warned they will not resume operations until their long-standing demands are addressed. Sanitation workers in Muzaffarabad in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan-administered Kashmir are on a strike to demand job regularization and abolishment of deduction in their salaries by the civic body. The strike has created a worrisome situation for the common public and local businesses for the past one week amid the holy month of Ramadan as unpicked garbage continues to pile up along roads in several parts of the city. The workers said their demands have been ignored for long and they will not resume work until they are met. The government has regularized our pension and regularized our pension. This is one number. The other number is that the government has cut off from the government. 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 تیسرا مطالبہ ہے کہ بلدیاتی ادار آجات میں جتنے بھی سینٹری برکریں انہیں مستقل کیا جائے The sanitation workers highlighted exploitation and blame the authorities have kept on delaying the process for the past several years Locals and government workers in Pakistan administered Kashmir have to often hit the streets or go on such long strikes to demand even their basic rights 
Nepal is struggling to contain the rapid rise of COVID-19 cases, with experts fearing that thousands of people in the Himalayan nation have caught the more infectious mutant strains emerging out of neighboring India. As of now, the Himalayan nation has recorded over 303,560 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 3,176 associated deaths. Authorities in Nepal are struggling to contain the rapid rise of COVID-19 cases, with experts fearing that thousands of people in the Himalayan nation have caught the more infectious mutant strains emerging out of neighbouring India. Nepal, which shares a long porous border with India, reported 3,032 new infections over the past weekend, the highest daily surge recorded this year. The country's total case load recorded so far is 303,561 and there have so far been 3,176 deaths according to government data. Nepal launched its vaccination campaign in January and gave shots to 1.9 million people, all provided by India and China. But health experts feared that continuation of the vaccination drive was uncertain after officials had failed to procure more vaccine shots from India or any other source. Over 90 developing nations, including Nepal, rely on India, home to the Serum Institute, the world's largest vaccine maker, for the doses to protect their own populations. But India has now prioritized its own needs as the second wave of the epidemic there has run out of control. A 27-year-old resident in India's Jammu and Kashmir has achieved a feat of copying the entire Quran, the Islam's holy book, in his own handwriting in just 58 days. He said he now aims to learn calligraphy and attract people towards Islamic teachings. Adil Nabi Mir, a 27-year-old resident of Srinagar in India's Jammu and Kashmir, has achieved a feat of copying the entire Quran, the Islam's holy book, in his own handwriting in just 58 days. Mir, after completing his bachelor's in science, decided to work on something that would help him stay positive and keep him away from bad habits during the coronavirus lockdown. He said he decided to copy the holy script on punch sheets and scripted it on a total of 598 pages in his own handwriting with God's grace. So I told him that he didn't tell anyone, I don't know if I will write or not. If I don't write, I will make it a mess. Then I did it completely. पहले पहले पारों में मुझे बहुत सारे पेज गलत हुए फिर तो मुझे एक साइड से लिखने में पूरा एक घंटा लगता था लिखने में फिर जो ही आगे आगे बढ़ते गए तो मुझे इम्प्रूवमेंट हुई मीर एक्सप्रेस्ड ग्रैटिट्यूड टुवर्ड्स हिस फैमिली मेंबर्स हु सपोर्टेड एंड मोटिवेटेड हिम इन द इनिशिएटिव ही नाउ Hindu holy men and devotees on Tuesday took holy dip in the revered Ganges River in India's Haridwar city, flouting social distancing norms at the ongoing Hindu religious gathering of Kumbh Fair. Though the number of people participating at the festival has been reduced, authorities are yet to officially call it off despite detecting hundreds of infections among participants who have poured in from across the country. Hindu holy men and devotees on Tuesday took holy dip in the revered Ganges River in India's Haridwar city, flouting distancing norms and COVID-19 discipline once again at the ongoing Hindu religious gathering of Kumbh Fair. This was the last royal bath of the festival which coincided with the Hindu monkey incarnation god Hanuman's birthday. Though the number of people participating at the festival has been reduced, Authorities are yet to officially call it off despite detecting hundreds of infections among participants who had poured in from across the country. This came even after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had requested religious leaders to only symbolically celebrate the festival, citing rising number of coronavirus cases. Unhi ki 
और सभी लोग अपना खुद अपनी केयर करें मास्क लगा के रहें सफाई का ध्यान रखें माँ गंगा मैया सबका कर सब पे अपनी कृपा बनाए रखें Over the past 24 hours, India recorded 323,144 new cases, with overrun hospitals running away patients due to a shortage of beds and oxygen supplies. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.